three, four, three, section 3.4 is solving. What is the beauty about solving an equation? When you get to the end and you get x equals, what can you do with your value or values to know, oh, I got this one right? Plug it back. Plug it back. You can plug it back in. Okay. That is a very helpful piece of information because when you do your test, which is on Thursday, right? It's going to be pretty heavy on condensing and expanding and then on solving. All the solving ones you should know from the get if you got them right or not. And I'll explain to you how to do that and all that good stuff. But we need to remember two very important things. When we talk about logarithmic and exponential functions, what do we know they are to each other? Inverse. They are inverses. I want you to write that down. I want you to write that down because we're solving equations today. And then when we solve equations, if we want to undo multiplication, we divide. If we want to undo subtraction, we add. So if we start off with a logarithmic, the inverse would be to change it to an exponential. And then when we talk about our natural log, natural logs inverse is what? E. Yep, e to the x. All right, so let's be very aware of where those buttons are in our calculators. Again, we're gonna talk about change of base at certain times. Some of your calculators do it, some of them don't. So I'm going to assume that you don't know how to or that your calculator doesn't, and then we can work through things. We're going to solve equations, guys. <clears throat> we already know how to solve using the one-to-one -one property. We did this on our quiz. We talked about getting the bases to be the same, all that good stuff. So if you can, if you run into a situation where you can get the bases to be the same and solve using the one-to-one, -one, go ahead and do so. These ones we're not going to be able to, so we're going to have to use our brains a little bit here. Example one, all right? I'm going to tell you guys this. We're going to do ninth grade algebra, all right? We're going to solve basic equations. There's one step when we're solving these equations that is our pre-calc. If you get the pre-calc step correct, the rest is all just basic algebra. If you don't get that step right, the whole problem is wrong. So it's really important that you guys pay attention and we have to practice. I'm gonna give you probably 40 problems next week of practice, 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 practice. Because there's a bunch of different looking equations, but your primary goal is to just isolate X, get your answer. That's what we're trying to do here. So the first thing I want you to do, you can use a highlighter, you can use a pen, whatever. I'm gonna isolate my function. I have e to the x equals 72. Is there anything being added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided on our e to the x? No. no. Nothing. So now I have to say, okay, well I need that x to come out of the exponent and I need it to come down so I can just solve and say x equals. What is the opposite of our e to the x? Our natural log, ln. If I take the natural log, uh, if I take the natural log of this side, what happens to my ln and my e? Uh, they cancel. They out. cancel out. We learned our our properties of logs and natural logs. But what you do to one side of an equation, guys, you do where? To the other. To the other. So if I take the natural log of the left hand side, then I'm going to take the natural log of the right hand side. We have to balance it out and be fair. When these cancel out, my x comes down, and in your calculator, ladies and gents, what is the natural log of 72? Give me three decimal places. Uh, 4.277. 4 4.277. Victoria, you get the same thing? Yeah. All right, Pierce, you get that? I'll throw it in there. Now, guys, I got x equals 4.277. What is a way that I could check real quick just to make sure that I am correct? I can plug it back in. If you just take your calculator and you hit E, and then in your exponent you put 4.277. Yeah, what do you all get? 72.0. Okay, 72 point, but, 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 but how come it's not exactly 72? Because you rounded. Okay, we rounded. rounded. Right, E is an irrational number. So, But you should get something really close. When you plug your answer back in, and if I plugged my answer back in here and I got um, e to the x equals 12, that's not close enough. It needs to be really, really close to the number that you started off with. Okay, everybody all right? Let's look at the second one. What kind of a problem am I starting off with in B? Um, distribution? No, hang on, just look at the function itself. Oh, uh, there's no, it's just an exponential. It's an exponential. Good. So in our minds, let's think for a second. What is the opposite or inverse of exponential? Log. 
logarithmic. logarithmic. Okay, so think about that. Start your problem solving and think, okay, as I go through this, the opposite of exponential is log, so at some point I'm going to have to use logs. I t I'm telling you again, the best thing to do is isolate. You want to isolate your function. I want to get 2 to the x by itself. I do not want to do anything. We're not going to distribute or anything like that. I want to get 2 to the x by itself before I do any inverses with my log. So what do I do? How do I get 2 to the x by itself? Divide by 3. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Perfect. Divide by 3. What's 42 divided by 3? Uh, 14. Okay, there we go. All right, so now I look and I say, is my exponential function isolated? Is there anything being added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided? No. No. So now I need to say, okay, well, I, gotta, I have to get that exponential to cancel out. I just want x. I just want x, just plain x. I need to get that big 2 to go away. What's the opposite of an exponential function, guys? Logarithmic. Logarithmic. So if I take the log, why do I keep writing? If I take the log here, does anybody remember what little tiny base we should use? <clears throat> 10? Hmm? Think about it. I want the big 2 to cancel out. 2. 2, right? Remember our properties of logs? So if I take log base 2 of the left-hand side, what should I do to the right-hand side? Take log base log 2. Base two the same thing. So I, this cancels out. I'm left with x equals. Anybody remember, if you don't have change of base, and I know some of your calculators do, but if you don't have your change of base formulas, anybody remember how to put this in our calculator? Isn't it like log base 10, 14 over log base 10 over 2? Yep, you can just hit, there you go, you're fine. Log 14 divided by log 2. And when you do that in your calculator, what do you guys get? 3 point, give me three decimal places. 3.807. People at home, you agree? Yeah. Victoria, you with me? Same thing, Charles, yes? So guys, what I want you, Diana, you're good? Deanna? Okay, right here, guys, that was the only pre-calculus step. Everything else, you're, go you're just going about solving a basic equation. But if you don't understand that logs and exponentials are inverses, that natural log e to the x are inverses, then you're not going to get the answers to this question correctly. Now, when I have this as my answer, what can I do to make sure that I got it right? Plug it back in. There you go. Plug it back in. Good. All right. Questions. We okay? All right. Let's go over here to number three. So you don't get yourself confused. Highlight, circle, whatever. Here is my function. Soon as I see an E, what should I think of as an inverse? Oh, logs. Lo what kind of logs? I'm sorry. Natural logs. That's okay. You don't have to apologize. Natural logs. So I want to get my e to the 2x in this case. I want it to be all by itself. Am I going to add 3 or am I going to divide by 4? What do I do first? Uh, you guys divide by 4 because that is, right? Think, think about our PEMDAS backwards. When we use, to solve equations, we use PEMDAS backwards. We, uh, add, three. add 3. Good. We're going to add 3 to both sides. Perfect. To everyone, this is a drill. This is a drill. Okay, so back to it. We're going to add 3 to both sides. Agreed. So I have 4 times e to the 2x equals 5. Now again, just for visual purposes, you don't have to do this every time. I'm just showing you. Is my e to the 2x isolated completely by itself? No. No, it's not. What do I need to do? Divide by 4. Perfect. Divide both sides by 4. So I have e to the 2x equals 5 over 4. Some people ask me in C period, can I just make that into a decimal now? Okay, fine. I would wait till the very end, but do what you need to do. Now that my e to the 2x is by itself, I need to get the e to cancel out. And I need my 2x to just drop down. So what do I need to do to both sides? I'll Let's multiply it by ln. Not really multiply by ln, but I understand what you're saying. We're going to take the natural log of both sides. Because if I take the natural log of the left-hand side, what happens to ln and e? It cancels out. So what you do to the left-hand side, you do to the right-hand side. So my 2x comes down. I have 2x equals, in your calculator, ladies and gents, hit ln, parenthesis, 5 divided by 4. 
or put it in as a fraction. <clears throat> you got to have a parenthesis though. What do we get? What's our crazy decimal? Wait, don't you need to divide by two first? I mean, after you do that. Okay, give me one second. If you see that, Vincent, you see that you're eventually going to divide by two, go ahead and do it. You, you know what? Do it that way, and I'll do it this way, and we'll compare our answers, right? What's the natural log of five divided by four? Say it again. Okay, point two two three, and then I, I need to still, I still have something attached to my x. What do I need to do? Perfect. Divide by two, and I get x equals what? Point one two. Is it one point one or point one one two? Point one one two. Okay, so Vincent, you divided at this point, right? If you did it all together, look, we got the same answer. But guys, what I want you to understand and to realize, there is one pre-calculus step in this equation, and it's right there. This is not anything major, anything super crazy hard that you guys can't, can't tackle, I promise. But there's a lot of, the, the, the problems are presented in a lot of different ways. So we have to make sure that we can do this with some fluency. On your test, you're probably going to have 10 problems that you have to solve in a limited amount of time. You have to be able to understand how to solve an equation and understand what our inverses are. Are we okay with one, two, and three? Yes. Okay, moving on, here we go. <clears throat> I'm going to change this when I rewrite it as an X because my T's end up looking like plus, plus signs. But the first thing I'm gonna do is isolate. I'm going to tell myself, this is the function that needs to be by itself. What am I starting off with? What kind of a function is this? Exponential. Exponential. So I know at some point during my problem solving, I'm going to have to do what? I'll multiply by not multiply, minus. not multiply, not multiply. I'm sorry. It's take okay. You're going to take the log. Good, 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 good. So let's isolate 3 to the 2x minus 5. What do I do first? Uh, add 4 to both sides. We're going to add 4 to both sides. So I have 2 times 3 to the 2x minus 5 equals 15. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Okay. I still want 3 to the 2x minus 5 to be by itself, so what do I need to do? Um, divide by 2. Perfect. Divide both sides by 2. Now at this point, some of you are going to say, can I make that into 7.5? That's fine. <clears throat> Is my exponential function by itself now? Isolated. No. It's not? Well, no, it is. But it is, okay. So now, now here's my pre-calc step. How do I get an exponential function to go away? What do I have to do to both sides? Uh, I'll multiply by not log multiply, base. not multiply, not multiply. You're gonna take the what? The We're gonna take the log. So I'm gonna take log base what? Three. Three. Why did you guys choose three? To cancel out the three. There you go. So what you do to one side of the equation, you do where, folks? to the other. Thank you. And remember, this is 15 divided by 2 is a number by itself, so give it a hug. On the left-hand side, log base 3, 3 cancels out, so I'm left with 2x minus 5 equals, in your calculators, folks, how would you put this in if you don't have a change of base formula? I mean, if you don't have it in your calculator, what would you do? Drill, code red drill is over. Please. What do we do? What do I put in my calculator? Are we still in code yellow? No, we're not. We're better. Everything's fine. What do I, how do I put this in my calculator? Uh, what would it be log 7.5 over log it, 3? It would be log 17.5, or if you're going to keep it as a fraction, 15 over 2. I, I meant 7, not 17. Over log 3. <laughs> There's our pre calc step right here, guys. Pre-calc is over now. Do this in your calculator. You get 2x minus 5 equals what? Uh, 1.834. 1.834. You guys agree? Yes. Perfect. All right. Now, every single person in here can solve this equation. What do I do? Add 5 to both sides. Add 5 to both sides. So, I'll get 2x equals 6.834. Divide by 2, and I get x equals what? 
And what can I do with that to make sure my answer is right? <coughs> Plug it back in. But if you just kind of think through the problem before you start attacking it, it's not that bad. Let's look at A here. Okay, okay thank you. Natural log 3x equals 2. <clears throat> do not make the mistake guys this is the natural log of 3x this is your whole function right there if it said 3 times the natural log of x then I would divide both sides by 3 but is that the case here no, no th that natural log and 3x are together that 3 is in between the natural log and the x so it stays together so there's nothing I can do. Excuse me? Is it the same for log? Yep. So log 3.7, you can't move it. Correct. So what is the opposite or inverse of natural log? E. E. So when I take the E, right, I put the E, everything goes up into the exponent. So it's ln of 3x equals E to the what, do you think? To the second power? To the second power. <clears throat> You just push everything up. Just like when we take logs and the exponentials and we cross them out, the exponents come down. In this case, you just move up. So now that the bases are the same, I cross off my E's and I get the natural log. Just kidding. I'm going to cross off the E and the natural log. And I get 3x equals. Now at this point, Vincent, if you wanted to just hit E to the second divided by 3, that's fine. But what is E to the second power, guys? Seven point three eight nine, and then I do what to both sides? Divide by Divide three, and I get x equals what? Miss. Hang on, one sec, Deanna. Hang on. Three. What is it again? Two point four six three. Two point four six three. You guys agree? Hold up. Okay. <clears throat> you have to evaluate what this number is. When I said the E's cancel out, I meant this cancels out. That's what I meant. E to the E, e squared is E squared is a number. I used E squared then divided by three and I got the same answer. Perfect. So. That's the same thing. You just did it in one step, I did it in two. You're not supposed to cross out the E from the other side. No, 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 no. I didn't mean to do that. All right, so in B, I have log 3 of 5x minus 1 equals log 3 of x plus 7. Now, we, just, we learned something in the first day that we did this with properties of logs. What do you notice about the logs on either side? <clears throat> that they're the same. They are the same. I have one log 3 on the left, one log 3 on the right, so I can cancel them out. And I say 5x minus 1 equals x plus 7. If you have one log on the left and one log on the right that are exactly the same, just cancel them out. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. 4x minus 1 equals 7. Add 1 to both sides. 4x equals 8. Divide by 4 and I get x equals 2. <clears throat> now this is the first problem. Yes. Deanna. Okay. This is the first problem, guys, that we've started off. Look, this is important. The first problem that we've started off with logs like this. In your calculator right now, if you hit log negative 2, natural log of negative 7, your calculator is going to say error. You cannot take the log of a negative number. So when you get an answer, especially when you start it off in logs, you need to go back up and just make sure when I plug that answer in here, it doesn't make your parentheses negative. So 5 times 2 is 10, minus 1 is 9. You're good to go. 2 plus 7 is 9. Good to go. You have to make sure that it doesn't make the parentheses negative. If it does, then your answer is no solution because you cannot take the log of a negative number. Deanna, question. <clears throat> so are we gonna go 
jump into a question where one side only has one log or yes. both sides back on yes. LN. Yes. Is there an example of that? Yeah, I'm not done yet. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Let's look down here. All right, there's my function. I want to get the natural log of x by itself. So let's go through basic algebra. How do I do that? <coughs> subtract 5 from both sides. Perfect. Subtract 5. So I get 2 times the natural log of x equals negative 1. I still want the natural log by itself, so what do I need to do? Divide by 2. Divide by 2. So I have the natural log of x equals negative 1 half. Now that I have my natural log all by itself, what is the opposite, guys, of natural logs? Or just e. E. So I'm going to say e to the ln x equals e to the negative 1 half. And then what happens with my e and my ln on the left-hand side? Or they cancel out. So I'm left with x equals... Calculator. Uh, 0.607. Agreed, people? Not yet. Yeah. Okay, so 0.607, is that what you said? Yes. 6.07. Right here. That was our pre-calc step. Everything else? Basic algebra. All right, you guys with me? You're doing a really good job. <clears throat> Moving along, moving along, I have three more examples. Three more examples, okay? What am I going to highlight here, guys? Log 5 of 3x. This whole thing is my function. So what do I do first? Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Perfect. So I now have log 5 of 3x equals 2. All right, log 5 of 3x. My function is by itself. Well, shoot. What is the opposite of logs? Exponential. Exponentials. And if I want my log 5 to cancel out with an exponential, what does the big base need to be? What number? Uh, 5. 5. So I'm going to write a big base of 5 and then put everything in the exponent. And what I do to the left-hand side, I do where? The right-hand. So this becomes 5 squared. If you write it out like I am, I know I wrote that 5 real big, but if you write it out like that, you guys will see the difference. You'll see what it should look like. Now, with our properties of logs, guys, from last week, what happens with 5 log 5? Uh, it just turns into 1. It cancels out. So I have now 3x equals 25. Now what do I do? Divide by 3. Divide both sides by 3. And I get x equals what? <clears throat> 8.33 continuing. Okay, so on WebAssign, whenever you guys decide to do it between now and Tuesday morning, if they tell you to enter it as a decimal and round, then do that. If they tell you to keep it as an exact number or whatever, then keep it as a fraction. Pay attention to what they're asking, all right? A lot of times with this stuff, we keep it in decimal form, but... You know, just see what they say. Yes, sir. It's not, but that's not, <clears throat> it's not that the bases are the same, Carlos. Right here, when you simplify this, this becomes one. It's not, it's, it's not that there, that's, we did that part of the equation, so we would get that to cancel out. I promise you, the more we do this, the easier it'll get. I promise. Whoa, look at this one. There's a lot going on here. What do you guys notice about this problem? That there's two natural logs on the same side. Okay, there's two natural logs on the same side. Is it, does the whole thing have natural logs in it? No. It doesn't? Yes. Yeah, oh, right? Yes, it does. The whole way through. Did we do something in 3.3 that could maybe make this process a little easier? to make the, like, 
What would make life really easy if there was one natural log on the left and one natural log on the right, correct? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Can I do something with the two natural logs on the left-hand side to, to combine them into just being one? Oh, you can, addition means like multiplication. Correct, I can condense it, right? When you have something that's pulled apart like that, you can smush it back together. So if I smush this back together, I can rewrite this as the natural log of what? Don't foil yet, but you would pull it, natural log, I rewrite the natural log once. What did you just tell me addition becomes, Vincent? Multiplication. So x plus, or sorry, x minus 2, 2x two minus 3 equals, well, how can I get that ln? What, is there something I can do with that 2 since I'm condensing everything? I'll put it as an exponent on the x. Yep. All I did was just move this backwards because we're, we know we're allowed to do that. Now, do I have one natural log on the left-hand side and one natural log on the right-hand side? Yes. So what can I do with them? Uh, most, I'm sorry, not multiply on, but find the E of it. But if I, do, if I do E on one side, I do E on the other, what's going to happen? with if I, Look, if I did an E here and an E here, what would happen with the LNs? Right, so if they're both the same, can I just cancel them out from right here? Yeah. Yeah, I could just go like this. And then now we have a basic algebra problem. Foil x times 2x is 2x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Negative 2 and positive 2x is negative 4x. And a negative and a negative is plus 6 equals x squared. What should I do now? Subtract x squared. Okay, subtract x like squared terms. and combine like terms, agree. So I have x squared, this becomes minus seven x plus six equals what? Zero. Zero. Do I know how to solve this? Uh, yes, yeah. Which is? Uh, negative six and ne negative one. Mm-hmm, so I get x equals six and x equals one. What did I tell you when we started off doing this? When you start off your problem with logs and natural logs, what should you do with your answers? You have to plug them in. Let's check them. Let's just, you don't have to evaluate anything. The parentheses cannot be zero. So if I take six and I put six right here, what's six minus two? Four. Four, okay, that's positive, you're fine. If I put six here, what's two times six? Minus three. Nine. Positive, we're good. If I put six here, that's a positive number. So six works. What happens when I plug in one? You get negative numbers. If I get just one negative, I know it's not right. If I oh, plug, get two if, but, but what I'm saying is if I can get one, if I, what's one minus two? <laughs> Negative one. negative one. In your calculators, guys, hit natural log negative one. What does it tell you? It probably says error, not in real answer. Okay. You guys get error? Yeah. It's not that your calculator's wrong. That means this solution doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You can just cross it out. If you just cross it out, you're telling me it's extraneous. That's fine. I got one more example, and then guys, I promise you next week we're going to spend two or three days just going over a million of these kinds of problems. Why did you cross out the one? Because when I plug in one up here into my parentheses, what's one minus two? Negative. I get negative one, and you can't take the log or the natural log of a negative number. Same thing would happen here, like if you plugged it in here, two minus one is two minus three, I'd get negative one, so it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. No problem. Oh, so you can't like keep it in the condensed version and like multiply it together? No. No, no, no. You got to go back to the original. What does this problem kind of look like? Matter? Yeah. I got a question. Like, the other... Wait, 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 wait. When I canceled out x to the power of 2 before factoring. Here? Yeah. Okay. Doesn't that also cancel the 2? 
No, if I have one, if I have two x squared so minus one x squared, that gave me my one x squared left. Okay. See that? I see. Guys, what does number ten kind of look like? Um, quadratic. Does it kind of look like a quadratic? That's exactly what this problem is. This is just a quadratic. This is a factoring problem. <clears throat> Everybody in here, if I said to you 2x squared minus 9x minus 18, you would tell me to do what? Uh, do the quadratic formula. No, don't do the quadratic formula. See if it does what first? See if it factors. So 2 times negative 18 gives me negative 36, right? That's what you're doing here. When you have a quadratic like this, you have your two parentheses. Instead of x in each the front of each parenthesis, what do you think I should put in the front of each parenthesis? E. E to the what? E to the x. Yeah, because e to the x times e to the x, when you have the same base and you multiply, what happens to the exponents? What do you do to them? You add them. Yes, 1 plus 1 is 2. This is just a quadratic. Instead of x in the beginning of each parenthesis, you put e to the x. Now just like you usually would, a times c is negative 36. What are the factors of negative 36 that multiply to give me negative 36, but add to give me negative 9? Negative 12 and 3. Perfect. Negative 12, positive 3. Since my a term is not 1, I know you guys all do this differently. I, this is how I do it. Since my a term is not 1, I'm going to take that 2 and just put it underneath. Can I simplify 12 divided by 2 nice and pretty? Yes. Yes. So I have e to the x minus 6, correct? Can I simplify 3 over 2 nice and pretty? No. No. So this becomes my coefficient, 2e to the x plus 3. Now you have two tiny little equations that you solve. I have e to the x minus 6 equals 0, and I have 2e to the x plus 3 equals 0. So if I want to get e to the x all by itself, what do I do on the left-hand side? Uh, natural log. Not yet. I want e to the x by itself. Add six. Okay, add six. good. So I have e to the x equals 6. Now, Vincent, what would I do? Now you do this. I already added the 6. It's okay. So, guys, ln and e cancels out, so I get x equals, what's the natural log of 6? Y one. 1.791. 1.791. How do we feel about that? Uh, but there's a 7, so you ground to 1.792. Oh, that's okay. 1, 2, in the thousands place, not super concerned. All right, so let's let's solve the other one. How do I do this? Uh, plus, subtract three. Subtract three. So I get two e to the x equals negative three. Now what? I divide by two. Divide by two, and I get e to the x equals negative three over two. Last step. Okay, if I take the natural log of the left-hand side, I take the natural log of the right-hand side. Right here, you can stop. If you don't see it, that's okay. Natural log and E will cancel out. In your calculators, peeps, put in natural log of negative 3 over 2. It's not going to work because it's negative, right? Mm-hmm. What's the natural log of negative 3 over 2? Uh, it's not a real answer. What does your calculator tell you? Error. Error. So this one won't work. So you just have one solution here. You could stop right there and just cross it out and say it doesn't work. If you don't see it, no big deal. Go the extra step to do natural log of negative 3 over 2, and your calculator will tell you, oh, wait, it doesn't work, which is fine. Questions? You guys did a great job with this. Now, I know when you get home, I know you're going to pull this up and be like, wait, what? Talk yourself through like I did. Isolate the function. 
Look at the function and say, I'm starting off with exponential, then that means I need to take the log. I'm starting off in log, I need to go exponential. I'm starting off in natural log, I need to go to E, and vice versa.